Hey guys, on this video I'm gonna I'm gonna um, install Arch in a dual boot environment with a Windows but installing the Arch on the script Arch install now this is the updated version or the new version based from the from this ISO or the new ISO and I made a video of it and with that I'm gonna put the link on the on the description or the that uh, initial one that I have made so first things first is of course um, you need to have the windows and you need to create a space for it so let me just log into this windows 10 that i have created so going back disk hmm. it's a little bit slow <clears throat> now you have the r assume you have only one disk now it's like a lot easier to to install it on a separate drive but if you have only one drive then you can shrink this to a smaller partition in this case I'm gonna just gonna leave um, 25 gigabytes for my uh, arch installation so if 25 600 megabytes is equal to 25 gigabyte <coughs> there you go 25 gigabyte then of course before you reboot then you need to make sure that you have a the you have downloaded the arch linux um, on a usb if you have only one small usb it only needs one gigabyte of usb two gigabyte of usb then you burn that uh, image of the arch linux to usb or if you have a bigger drive then you can also use the ventoy for that so let me just in, in any case of course you need to um, boot it through the hard drive uh, to the usb now still not here now i need to put it the uh, arch linux image to the cd so you can put it from there and of course I need to change this so I can put it there on the on the Arch Linux only so so now here we are now on the um, Arch Linux I'm not gonna go through here this is the UFI oh by the way this this um, tutorial is only for UEFI with an EFI system you cannot you do this on an MBR because I've tried it uh, before for some reason it doesn't work so you have to do the manual way of installation maybe I'm gonna well, let me know if you want me to create a, a how-to for that but there's a lot of already on the internet how to how to install manually on the MBR not the arch install so let me just put it to the arch linux <laughs> so here of course uh, you need to connect to internet first i had a, i made a video on how to connect through the wi-fi with the iwctl i'm gonna leave the link on uh, below and for that we need to test the connection if there is a connection now i know that i have connection because this is a vm so for that we need to uh before that we need to um, again format the space that we have created so now see here still does not show the this still let us show the 25 gigabytes in which we have allocated uh, so i would suggest this cf disk 
because this is a graphical you can use also f disk but um, for me i'm comfortable with the cf disk so here we have the 25 gigabyte that we shrink earlier and i'm just gonna create a 500 megabytes for the efi now let's change the type to efi system very important because we need to assign this for a boot uh, partition later on and then you can also create here a swap if you want to create swap now i know most of the most of the uh, people say that if you have more than 16 gigabyte of ram you don't really need a swap but a small swap doesn't really hurt to be honest and you can just assign that later on for a low priority so it will not create or if you have a high if you have a high uh, uh, capacity or a lot of ram then you can use zram for your swap but um, for this um, i need i will make a four gigabyte of swap because it's much more stable to be honest it's gonna be slow but it's much much more stable so after this assign so sda 5 6 and 7 then of course need to write otherwise it will not work so lsbak here wait let me just make it full space so it will be clear so now we have the SDA 5, 6, and 7, which is for the hour that it's installed. So, make f um, you need to format first the uh, SDA 5 to be FAT F32 dev SDA 5. Now, make sure that you are really formatting to this, this one because once you format, let's say you made a mistake, you format the SDA 4 or three where your main windows file is or two and one then <laughs> there's no turning back here you need to make sure that you are formatting the proper partition okay then we need to format the swap that uh, created okay swap sda6 then swap one then sda6 now you need to uh, enable now the swap on because then the system, the arch install will detect it later. And then um, for this ext4 is much much more stable. There is also a a BTRS BTRFS function or file system which is getting popular. It's the one which I'm using to my system. However, uh, if you are still new, I would suggest you use the ext4, which is uh, it's well known to be really stable. Okay, so that's the five six seven five six seven. Then after you format the part the partitions or the partitions that you have created, and you can just type arch install. <coughs> Now the format here is a little bit updated. Uh, let's see. So see here, this is more of a self-explanatory. If you want a different language, for example, you can mm, choose here. Keyboard layout. If you have a different keyboard layout, then you can also uh, change here. I'm not going to change now. Mirror region, I would suggest you choose the country where you are or or which is closer to you because then you got a less latency for your download or the pack when you are downloading packages. <coughs> ah. And then of course, uh, local this, I would suggest not to touch this. Later on, you can just add additional language if you need because 
I've read that there are some programs, games for example, in which it requires at least a locale encoding of UTF-8. So I would suggest not to change this now. Drives, this is one of the important. Make sure that you are really choosing the drives here that you wanted to install to. So for example here, if you have a lot of drives on your system, then you have uh, more here. But I know that the fact that I am now, um, you see here tab to select. So I'm just gonna enter the disk layout. Now this one, this is one of the things, only two things that you need to do in here. So select, do not se uh, wipe all. Of course, if you want to wipe all, then of course you you need to just completely erase erase your drive. But for this, just gonna select what to. Um, yeah, so I know. Then the only thing that you needed to do here is the, um, you don't need to change the f uh, file system or format because you already have it here. See here, we have this tree that we have created earlier. So I'm just gonna mark, there's only two things that you need to do. One is the assign mount point for partition. So this is number, you see here, four. That's for the uh, STA5, which we have choose earlier, four. Then we need to assign as mount slash boot. Now this is important because I've tested a lot and if you don't have this slash boot as a mount point, then it will not install anything. It will not, you will receive an error for sure, 100%. And then, of course, the mount point is your root partition, in which I know that this is the last one is the root partition. So I will assign that for a mount point. The mount point for a root partition is only this. Then, of course, if you have assigned a different drive or partition for your home, then it has to be slash home. So, and after that, save and exit encryption password if you want to put a password i have I ha i'm not putting any password on my system to be honest um you can do so and bootloader i know for my last video i have i have uh, used gruv but for this i've tried to use gruv but it doesn't work for some reason and i found out that the system the um, system debut is works really really easier it's a lot easier and if you want to choose of course if you want a GRU bin still but for this I would suggest to use system debut because as of now I tried GRU bin the same steps that I have tried on my previous video uh, for some reason it doesn't work so the yeah, system D swap this is the zero if you have a lot of a RAM, let's say 16 gigabyte, then you can assign a four gigabyte ZRAM if you wanted. But for this, since I created a swap, I'm not gonna uh, use a uh, ZRAM. And host name, of course, if you want to put any host name, this is a free text. So I'm just gonna just Put it to arch root password um, I still suggest to put in a root password or enable the root user account of course add your user and just signing a a a weak password because this is only a VM anyway so I wanted the my user to be a sudo or super user sudoer. Then confirm and exit profile. This is um, this is if you want to have a very minimal installation only, or you want to be the desktop environment. Now 
I don't really like a genome or or anything else. Now this one I'm using a uh, Sway X XFC4 is also here, but I also like the KDE. So you can you can choose here. There is a pre, but for this I'm used to KDE, so I'm just gonna choose the KDE and then it will ask you for this video card drivers now if you have of course a NVIDIA or if you have an Intel only iGPU then choose this one Intel and um, AMD of course if you have AMD a GPU then choose the GPU so but for this I'm just gonna use the all open source audio a lot of people they don't like pipe wire but I like pipe wire I never had issue with pipe wire been using pipe wire for more than two years already and I don't really have issue kernels of course if you want to have the harden or LTS so for this list just I will install both the Linux and, and Linux and uh, hope I do type in I mean press the enter so there additional package now you have to install a browser Firefox then a money um, Vim to edit or if you are more comfortable with nano you can also put VLC here if you want uh, you, later on you can install anything whatever you want it no, that's now for this this is just a pre-installation so for this I'm just gonna use Firefox oh, you fetch why not <laughs> now of course it it's checking if the packages is there if it's accept then it will accept if it's not then it will tell you that the packages that you wanted to install are not there so but for this it's just an essential one network configuration I would suggest to use network manager I've been using network manager for a very long time don't have issues and it's also here it's necessary to configure internet graphically in GNOME or and GNOME so if you choose the GNOME and KDE and I would suggest this even if you use any other profile network manager is I think is the easiest and you have a less less headache so you will get your Wi-Fi LAN working immediately. Time zone, if you want, if you want only on a UTC time zone, you can choose so. If not, um, you can choose your local. Uh, for me, I'm living in Korea, so uh, see here. For example, press this slash to search. So I'm searching my place. Uh, so it's there, Asia Zone automatic time yes of course I want it automatic time and then install uh, wait they cannot really see here now let me get rid of the now where's my cursor <laughs> what happened to my cursor allocated VRAM VO I don't know about this Press enter to continue. Uh, this is because of the QS, QXL. See, QXL, this is my video for my Kemo, uh, Kemo KVM. Just, I don't think you will. If you are using in a computer, then you won't experience this. This is because I'm trying to get out of the my cursor here. So, last one is press enter to continue. So, enter. Then it will um show in here let me just why where's my cursor again <laughs> uh, anyway so after this you need to see its root same as my video before now bigger let's get out of the full screen and of course um after you install it will ask you if you wanted to see edge root now um, you need to see edge root and I'm just gonna fast forward the video after this then um, 
and I'm gonna show you the next steps so you can add the windows um, your windows uh, partition okay I'm gonna fast forward this it's gonna take some time it depending on your computer now this is of course on a hard drive the my image is on the hard drive so it's it's a little bit slow if you have a fast connection also and you will have a very fast download speed so just uh, leave it there don't touch anything do not reboot do not of course so just wait until it the script uh, installed okay I'll be right back watch once it's installed Okay, so we're back now with the here on the last part. Would you like to see it to create a newly created installation? Then you need to say yes here, type enter. Now you are in the newly installed arches, arch. Now the things that you needed to do because right now here it's still not. So if we uh, type in again the LSBLK the uh, Windows is still not here now we need to mount the SDA1 in which this one here SDA1 this is the EFI or boot partition for the Windows that's the first one now we need to make a folder to our um, MNTs because so we can able to mount it let's just say win win 10 or win 11 or whatever you call it but for now we just put it win 10 then it to mount the SDA1 to MNT win 10 so if for example let's see the MNT MN win 10 we have this EFI CD EFI oh <laughs> CD MNT and change the win uh, 10 EFI LS now we need to copy this Microsoft to our boot uh, um, uh, what I call this uh, boot EFI uh, folder now you just need to uh, type this um, recursive CP R to MNT uh, win 10 EFI Microsoft to our boot EFI backslash now if we if we change uh, check the folder of the um, boot EFI now we have already here Microsoft and then one more thing is we need to make sure to put a timeout for a uh, for our loader so that's you can use the nano with which we have already downloaded earlier or you can use beam if you are uh, if you are used to beam 
uh, check this uh, with boom loader loader the configuration file now it's already here it's created by um, by the system already if you don't have then you need to create this uh, timeout uh, this is three seconds or you can change it to five seconds or three seconds uh, just keep it now for this three seconds now uh, we exit that one so we type in exit let me just see here oh, it's there it's 971 megabytes which is using but that will be uh, less later on so you can type in exit and then you can do a reboot if you want but for this you need to shut down because earlier shut down now earlier i i said it that it will boot at the uh, uh, cd first so let me just change here details so i want to boot it now on the uh, disk so play then you should be greeted by this you have now the arch linux um, linux or the linux z and windows 10 so first i'm gonna boot with the windows 10 to see if it's working <coughs> so now it's here it's booted so i don't need to no need to log in there so i'm just gonna restart it so let's see if let's say you restart here and it will not uh, show the it will not show the um, arch that you have installed earlier so it's like this it's not showing so what you can do is to launch to that to that um, uh, in um, arts that you have installed earlier you can click um, before you click the restart press the shift on your keyboard just hold the shift and hold it down the shift keep holding down the shift because then it will just keep holding the shift until it will pop up a option for you so here us use a device enter then you have this linux foot manager so enter that one then you should be here already so let's just put on the arch linux then of course log in to your system and then you can just um, um, edit it as you wish so I hope this video helps you if you have questions or or any concerns then just leave a uh, like or I mean sorry leave a message down at the comments and if you like this video you can like it and please share it so it will help me grow okay take good care guys and enjoy <laughs>